Hello everyone, welcome to today's interview. Today we're going to be talking about all things the entertainment industry and anxiety. We've got a wonderful guest today, um, Paris Bareilles, um, really fantastic actor. Can't wait to chat to her, speak all things mental health and uh, yeah, let's just talk all things anxiety and let's continue to normalise the speech about anxiety and just continue to create mental health awareness. So I hope you enjoy the live guys. Thank you so much. Hi from Spain, I was there too. Hi Paris, are you okay? Hi, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Firstly, thank you so much for coming on the platform to speak about mental health and anxiety. Um, really appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Oh yeah, of course. Thank you guys for wanting to do a live with me. I followed um, your account a while ago um, and I've always just loved everything that you guys post and it's helped me learn a lot. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited to talk to you guys today. Fantastic. Paris, um, just for everyone who may be living under a rock and they don't know who you are, can you just give a brief introduction just about yourself, what your day job is, and why mental health is uh, important to you, and have you dealt with anxiety before, um, etc.? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah. So, hi, I'm Paris. Um, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I moved to LA when I was 14. I did a couple of shows um, on Disney, like uh, Mighty Med and Lab Rats Elite Force. I had a show on Netflix called Alexa and Katie. Um, and I definitely do have anxiety. <laughs> um, I didn't realize how important mental health was until I was maybe about like 19. Um, and then one, I think actually last year is when I really started um, taking more of an initiative on working on it, um, like going to therapy or talking about it with um, friends um, and following accounts like this one. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's just kind of been a brief summary of my journey with it. So just like um, going through your school and that, um, is mental health, uh, was it spoke about uh, between friends or was there any education around it? With mental health, I mean, no. I, I mean, it, it was something that just friends and I talked about. It wasn't something that was taught to us. We kind of had to figure it out oh. on our own through each other. And I didn't even know certain things that I was feeling. I didn't even know it was anxiety. And I, I had like my first panic attack when I was like 18 and I had no idea what was going on. So, um, I definitely wasn't educated um, through school or work or, um, um, yeah, and I've never been educated in that sort of way. So I just kind of had to like figure it out by researching it and talking to friends who have dealt with that as well. Yeah, it's the same here in the UK, it's something that obviously we try and push for as well, because we know that psychoeducation is so important when it comes to mental health and anxiety, because mm -hmm you get all these scary symptoms. And just like you said, when you had a panic attack, you didn't realize what was happening to you at, at the time. And I can really resonate yeah. with that because it was exactly the same uh, with me when I had a panic attack. I literally felt like I was dying. I, 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 yeah. I, thought, that, I thought that was it. Um, yeah, and, that's, that, but, that's what it feels like. It, just, it feels like you're dying and then you kind of yeah. relate certain things. Um, so like when I have panic attacks, I get my heart races, I get really hot and I feel like I can't breathe. So yeah. if I'm outside too long or if I'm doing a workout and I'm just pushing myself too much, I, I get that same feeling and I kind of, I'm like, oh wait, like, I, it kind of like affects you in other ways through life um, because there's like significant things that your body does and it recognizes it. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I have to be like, okay, I'm fine. That's all good. I'm just like really hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like exercise um, helps um, reduce your anxiety or like you say, when you're on the treadmill, for example, and you're, you're, uh, um, your heart's racing, it almost mimics anxiety, doesn't it? And then we can um, like wrongly assume that we're anxious when really, like you say, it's just exercise. How, how's your relationship with exercise? I love working out. My boyfriend, he's a trainer, so we work out all the time. If I don't work out, I noticed that it actually is worse for my mental health. 
Um, right. I think the times when I'm, it's just like when I get too hot or like if I'm running in the sun, I don't really run in the sun anymore, but I can run on the treadmill perfectly fine. But when I would run in the sun, the heat would just hit me so hard. And I, that's when I would start to kind of feel like I was getting like an anxiety or, or like a panic attack. Um, just because the heat was like overwhelming. But yeah, if I'm not working out all the time, I, I don't feel normal, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it does help me a lot with anxiety. But I have other friends too, they run and from their heart racing, um, they start to feel like they're having a panic attack and they have to stop. Um, so that is a totally valid thing um, that happens to people too. I think it's just trying to find the balance because you obviously want to get your body moving and um because it, it's healthy to do that um but you also don't want to push yourself too much to where your mental health is being messed with no exactly and a lot of people um get that feeling do you know like um after they've had like a cup of coffee like uh, with caffeine i've had that too <laughs> i've had to stop drinking yeah. so much coffee because caffeine has made me start to uh not feel good <laughs> yeah so the reason is obviously when we have caffeine it gives us like this boost it increases our heart rate and it can make us feel nervous. Now, an anxious person um, can misinterpret this as that it's anxiety. So what happens is um, once, you've ha once you have a cup of coffee and then you misinterpret that it's anxiety, um, you, can, you can feed the anxiety loop. And every time you then go to have a cup of coffee, you start to feel anxious. So a lot of people start to avoid caffeine. Um, how, mm -hmm. How are you with the caffeine in front of you? Are you still having like coffee or do you tend to just avoid it now? Like, I guess you have a lot of early mornings or are you okay without the caffeine? Yeah, no, I, I do have to drink coffee because I'm always awake and I, <laughs> I, um, I like the taste of it, but I've definitely had to calm down um, the amount that I would drink because I would drink a lot of caffeine. And the last time I had too much, I actually did have a panic attack. Yes. Um, and... I just felt like my heart was racing and I felt like my chest was like caving in. Um, and I didn't know what was wrong with me. So, but it was from all the caffeine that I drank that day. And so after that, I've just kind of been like, okay, I'm gonna relax on the amount. I can still have my cup or two of coffee, but I'm good after that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. So putting in boundaries. Um, and then yeah. like you say, not cutting it out um, completely, which I think is a, a really good good um someone advice. said i hate coffee that's funny <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah I, I just love it uh, in the morning but i was exactly the same when i had a panic disorder um i used to like check ingredients of things and if it had caffeine in there i'd just like totally just um just like avoid it uh, yeah. a lot of people fall into that trap um just regarding panic attacks i know you said that you've had a few do they uh, represent in the same way or do they manifest in different ways? So is there like a typical panic attack uh, that you get? So you like, you know that you have these symptoms. So you're like, oh, I'm having a panic attack now. And when they do occur, um, do you have any tips um, that help you reduce the anxiety in the moment? Yeah, um, normally when I get one, it is my breathing. I feel like I can't breathe anymore and my chest starts tightening. Um, mm. And, but I've had like different symptoms with a bunch of different ones. Like the last one I had, my hands and my feet were vibrating. Um, it was like I was touching a massage chair and yeah. I was like telling my boyfriend and I was like, feel my hands. And he was like, I, I, they're not shaking, like they're not vibrating. And that made me freak out even more because mm -hmm. I was like, why am I the only one that's feeling this? But I guess it's just your body is in like a response of fight or flight mode and oh. you have circulation moving in different ways and your heart's pumping really hard. So that's why people get the tingling and the vibrations. I had never had that though. So it was even more like, oh crap, like what's wrong with me? Um, and normally what I do in those situations is um, I just try to like control my breathing. I try to do the fours, like the breathe out for four, the hold for four. Um, and the breathe in for four. Um, and then I'll have um, someone distract me by like asking me a million questions. Um, that is what I notice works the best for me. And then drinking water too. I think everyone kind of forgets to drink water. So if you were on your own, would you reach out to a friend? Would I have tried to what? 
if you was on your own, would you reach out to a friend? So you said, like, you have yeah, someone. Yeah, I would call. Um, that happened to me on set before, actually. I started having a panic attack on set, and I just kind of ran in the bathroom. And um, I FaceTimed my boyfriend, and he just answered, and he was just, like, talking to me in the stall. And then I went back out. <laughs> so, yeah, and that, that's what happens, isn't it? The anxiety reaches a peak, <laughs> and then eventually anxiety is always temporary, so it'll start to reduce and like you say go back to normal um that just leads me on paris to the questions from the community there were so many uh, that people were asking i had to limit it down to five um so the first question is how would you speak to a friend who told you uh, they were struggling with anxiety um i would definitely remind them that they're not alone this is something that a lot of people feel um especially a lot of um young adults and it's totally normal and um i think the key thing is to just like be patient like if they're acting a certain way or if they're not saying the correct things like it's just important to kind of be patient because like when you have anxiety you're you're not in like the right headspace like your brain isn't working the way that it normally does so you can act out differently or you can say something that you may not mean and but it's also important for you to like take that and know that that's happening and to work on that so that you don't um, hurt like other people around you because that's obviously not the goal. Um, so yeah, I, I guess just like being patient is, is the way that I would talk. No, to yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. And a lot of people, um, we get asked that question a lot um, on the platform is how, how would you speak um, to, to one of my friends who's got anxiety? Um, a lot of people who are anxious, um, they don't want the other person to try and tell them how to fix the the issue because mm -hmm. believe it like if we've if we're dealing with anxiety we've tried everything under mm -hmm. the sun to try to try to reduce the anxiety so like you say just being there for the person just being a shoulder to cry on or, or someone to listen to really helps just like you mentioned uh, when you was anxious on set and you rang your boyfriend him just being there helped you in that moment to reduce the anxiety I, mm -hmm. I, I imagine he wasn't telling you all the things to do to try and cure the anxiety. He was no. <laughs> no, he definitely was not doing that. <laughs> yeah. That's really good advice. The next question is, do you ever get anxious while on set? So we have spoken about that a little. If so, how do you deal with it? You just mentioned, have you ever had to stop in the middle of filming? And if you haven't, have you seen this happen with like one of your co-stars? Yeah, I, yeah, like I, what I said, I, I did have um, a panic attack on set. I, it was a movie I filmed earlier this year, and there's just a lot going on. It was a very stressful environment, um, a lot of different personalities, and um, this was also during, like, really bad quarantine, um, like, really, really, everyone was in it, and I was in Canada, so it was even more strict. I was alone. I couldn't bring anybody with me. I had a lot going on back at home, which is LA. And I think all of it just kind of like formed together and something was happening on set and I saw it and I just felt like something kind of like shoot through me. And I, I was kind of like spacing off. And then one of my um, PAs, she looked at me and she was like, Hey, like Paris, like, I like saw her and she goes, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And I went in the bathroom, I closed the door. And like, as soon as I closed it, I just kind of felt like I was gonna faint for a second. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like lifted my head up and I was like, oh no. And then I just felt like I couldn't breathe. So then I FaceTimed my boyfriend and he was just on the phone with me, just kind of like talking me through it to get out of it. Um, and yeah, that's like, that's really, unfortunate and I just kind of had to walk back out there and act like nothing happened and continue with my job <laughs> um and that is you know I feel like the entertainment industry it's it's always full of stuff like that and um would like the people that you're working with so like the other actors would you tell them that you just had a panic attack or would you just get on with it um is it like is it spoken about a lot between actors um I could have. I mean, I said something later on, but I think just in that moment, I was just trying to kind of get through the day and not really um, have too many people 
like in on it. I just kind of wanted to get through it and then we all could go home. But I ended up saying something to my castmates later on and they were like, what, like, why didn't you say anything? And I was like, no, I just didn't want to say anything because I just didn't want it to be like a thing on set. And I just kind of wanted to like get through you, the day. You were focused on the goal at hand, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question is, I really want to be an actor, but every time I audition, anxiety gets the better of me maybe this means acting isn't for me. Do you have any advice? No, I don't think it means that acting isn't for you. I think, I think like, I mean, I still get nervous. I, I yeah. had a director's session today over Zoom and I was, I was nervous to do it. I was nervous about it last night. So, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily an anxiety thing. I think it's, it's more so of a nervous thing, but how you feel when you're nervous, you're relating it to anxiety. Um, or it could actually be, I'm not really sure about the situation, but um, I've been doing this for like 10 years and I still get nervous. Like I, but I think it's good to try to maybe kind of use that to um, like either in the scene or to use that to like kind of hype you up. And I think mm -hmm. it's just important to like, try to sell, settle yourself down, try to breathe and like focus on your breathing and just remind yourself that acting is, is fun. It's supposed to be a fun thing to do. It's not supposed to be that serious. It's a fun thing for everyone to do. And you're only like talking to people. You're auditioning for people. These are humans. They're not God. They're not like, <laughs> you know, they're not these extraterrestrial beings that hold your future. Like they are just humans doing their job and you're there to show them what you can do. And I think if you just try to remind yourself that it might help calm you down. Um, for auditioning but i think you definitely shouldn't not act because of that i think that you should try yeah. to work on that no i think that's really good advice because like you say a lot of people don't realize that actors just like everyone else and no matter what their job is get anxious get nervous especially with nerves like you say you can use that and direct that to it to help you perform it helps you become more uh, focused like you say within the scene and can actually make you improve so Having nerves isn't a bad thing. Um, and regarding anxiety, well, guess what? A lot of actors out there do have anxiety, so don't think that you're alone in that. And just because you're anxious doesn't mean that you can't be an actor, right? Exactly. I'm um, one, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a very good one as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, the next question is, um, do you have boundaries in place with social media? great question um yes i do sometimes i sometimes i delete the app because i just need a break because social media does give me anxiety um and it affects my body image it affects um the worth i have in myself because i'm constantly comparing to other people so i have to try to not look at other people's accounts and try to not look in my like explore feed, I have to just kind of look at my friends and just kind of post whatever I need to post, whether it's like for a partnership or just something I want to share and just, um, and also I, I don't post things that um, are not me. I try to stick with things that it's not to put on a persona for people to follow me. It's just for people to just kind of get a look into the things that I like and I care about. No, yeah, I think that's great. And I think uh, one of your last posts was a, a trip that you went on, was it with your boyfriend recently? Yeah, so... it was my boyfriend and my close friends. I've been friends with them since I was like 13. So we all got to go to Maui together. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a pretty fun trip. So yeah, that was the last thing I posted. Exactly, super authentic and why you say, um, with with social media, do you try and um, follow accounts that you know will improve your mental health? Yeah, um, yeah. that's why I followed DLC Anxiety because <laughs> yeah, I sure. just like I just I was just finding things that I um, that just helped a lot and didn't make me feel crazy um, and made me feel like okay, there's like other people talking about this. Like this is like a this is like, it's because for me, I still have to remind myself this is a normal thing, like that uh, other people are going through it. Um, so I think it's good to follow up like accounts that are like inspirational accounts, or, like inspirational quotes or like motivational accounts. 
um, accounts that are talking about mental health. Um, yeah, I think it's important to follow those because I think yeah. that can really that help. Was the re that was the reason that we set up the community because um, myself, I had a friend who'd been through an anxiety disorder and it really helped knowing someone who'd been through an anxiety disorder. So I thought, mm -hmm. hey, can we put this on a bigger scale? And then two years down the line, we've got 1.1 million people and people yeah. people being able to relate to each other's journey. It doesn't matter which step of the journey there are. Um, we're yeah. all on this anxiety journey. Like, I'm just obviously at the end, but I've, I've been through a panic disorder um, and it's really good that people can relate and, like I say, feel not, not alone, which is really important. Uh, the last question is, is there enough support in place for young people in the entertainment industry and if not, um, what do you think um, needs to be put in place? There's definitely not. Um, no. <laughs> I was just talking about this with my manager, actually. I, I think the common uh, trend is that, you know, you have all these kids working 16, 18 hour days. So it's normalized to work that much. Mm. And it's normalized to kind of put <laughs> your needs aside for everyone else. And it's normalized to just kind of do what you're told and do it when you're told to do it. Um, so you you have kids that are doing that. And then, you know, they grow up and they become teenagers and they start to get angry and sad and they start getting anxiety, but they don't really know that it's anxiety and mm -hmm. or depression or whatever it is. And so they use other things to make it go away whether it's like partying or drinking or drugs or whatever it is and then you get the backlash from like social media that's like oh this like kid actor just like went off the rails like they suck like no that's not what happens like that's not this is an industry that is a very toxic industry and does a really great job at putting people up on a pedestal and then just doing everything they can to knock them down um but no one's like talking about their mental health. Nobody's talking about getting help for them. There are no things in um, our industry. Like when you go to like a, a set, it's typically, you know, they just don't have anyone there to talk to you about stuff. They don't, I've, I've heard a couple times that there was a set therapist, but I've only heard that when the cast members were like going at each other nonstop. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely not things in place. I'm not entirely sure what the resolution is. I think, I guess having a set therapist would be great and a qualified one. Um, Cause I feel like that can get messy and I, I can see that like going a very wrong way as well. Um, if you have a therapist kind of hopping through each set. Um, and I mean, honestly, I think like SAG should just kind of start doing more for especially like kid actors. Like I started acting when I was 14, um, but kids start acting at like four or five, six. And I don't know, I just think it's very, it can be a very toxic thing for them. And I think that they should be protected more, um, especially with like social media and the way that the media paints actors and musicians. And um, yeah, I think that SAG or whatever union um, could definitely have more in place especially with like artists, because artists get screwed over by labels left and right. I mean, I have friends who are trying to get out of their contract because they can't make music mm. and because their label isn't doing anything for them. And it's just really sad to see. It's just a lot of companies kind of like using you to take over your work and then take the credit for your work without even really doing anything. Um, yeah. Especially what you said with artists there. Um, a lot of them, they just lose the individuality, don't they? And it's literally just mm -hmm. the the um, the label that's running the whole profile. Mm -hmm. I also, I saw um, someone ask in the comments, I, I think they asked like, um, it was something about like not being able to eat. Um, so I have that too. I, when I'm going through something, I'm not really able to eat. It's hard for me to take anything in. Um, I think the best thing to do is just to, like try to like nourish yourself a little bit every day and just like try to remind yourself like I have to like eat so that I can my body can be nourished and can work properly and I can um, 
try to like move on from like whatever cloud is kind of like taking over me right now. So if you're still on the live, I don't know if you are, but um, I saw that question and I, I really wanted to answer that because I understand that a lot. So would you, so I'll, like on a day where you haven't eaten a lot, would you then not do the exercise? Because obviously you need the energy, don't you, for the exercise, right? Yeah, exactly. And I've definitely had the unhealthy way of just kind of not, you know, eating and just working out to try to get past whatever's going on. But that's definitely not healthy. Um, and that's something that I had to work on. Um, but yeah, if you if you don't eat, you can't work out, you can't um, do anything really properly, like your brain won't think you will kind of have like a brain fog all day. So your brain isn't um, getting like the nourishment and the vitamins that it needs to like, um, heal and like work on itself. Um, so definitely try to eat if you but if you can't <laughs> just try to <laughs> going back to the uh, industry, I think the what you said about a onset therapist would work, I think that'd be uh, would be a good idea. Um, yeah. Regarding resources, so say if you're going for a movie or a TV series, um, would you get even like even a pack saying if you're struggling with mental health or anxiety, here's some resources for you to see? Or is it literally just nothing? I mean, I've never had that. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't think I do. I mean, I know that yeah, I no, I don't I don't think I've ever had that right. before. I've definitely been in situations where I've cuz like normally you have like a set medic, so if I was feeling a certain way, I would go to that um person cuz I w if I had a closer relationship with them and I would tell them what was going on and you know, you kind of create relationships with your hair and makeup girls and your mm. whoever, so that's another way that I would talk about my stuff but um no we never really no i've never really had like an onset thing or like a, a number to call i guess yeah i think obviously more needs to be even on psychoeducation because we know that education is so important with mm -hmm. anxiety especially what you said about children who were doing 12 14 hours so were you, were you doing 14 hour days when you were 14 yeah i yeah. was yeah and i just like i didn't say anything i mean because I also, if I'm, I don't know, I guess if I'm really passionate about something and they would ask, so it wasn't like, okay, you're just kind of forced to do that. I mean, it, there people have definitely had that before, but for me, I was asked. Um, so I would do the 14 hour days as a kid, but also like I was a gymnast, so I was just kind of used to like just kind of doing <laughs> whatever whenever someone you had asked no me free to. time as a child you had no free time uh no i have a, but i mean like i had fun as a kid i i and i'm thankful that i actually did gymnastics because it taught me a lot mentally um if anything becoming an actor messed me up mentally <laughs> so um but no gymnastics definitely taught me a lot with motivation and not giving up and you know you're gonna fall a hundred times but like you know still get up because all you need to do is like land it once um and i had great gymnastics coaches too so i'm i'm thankful for that but yeah i think how, how, did you feel on the, how did you feel on the competition side so if you didn't do as well as you thought you would do in a competition would that affect you mentally um i mean yeah i, I would be sad but right. you know I didn't like, it didn't stick with me at night, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, they didn't but, say go um, your life. Yeah, it just kind of motivated me to work harder. And um, I def and the wins were just always worth it. Like, it, mm -hmm. like when I got the wins, it like, it was worth all of the loses. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, and I, but I, I didn't really like competing in general. I, um, I loved gymnastics and I loved doing it. <laughs> but I could have done it without the comp competing. <laughs> oh, <I got> <laughs> that's, no, that's brilliant. Paris, I think that's a great place um, to leave it. I really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, thank you for answering the questions. Thanks for raising the questions that you saw in the comments and ask, yeah, uh, answering them as well. Um, 
I've seen a lot of people love for the work that you're doing. So a lot of people will want to know, is there anything you're working on at the moment? <laughs> um, and also, where can they find you on social media? Um, are you, is it just Instagram <laughs> you're on? <coughs> Sorry, I just got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, Amber, I'm dying. <laughs> <coughs> this is great to have and I'm alive. <coughs> Amber, you want to pop on for me for a second? <coughs> <coughs> okay. Hi, you okay there? I look so good. <laughs> you do look good. You look great. Thank is, you. Is, you do too. Is Paris okay? Yeah, she's just having um, a, a little mini episode. <laughs> she said she had a tickle in her throat. All right. I got her some water. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Supportive better. friends. Fantastic. <laughs> I was, I okay. was we're we're going to bring her back now. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know why. I, I was really worried. I'm glad you're all okay, here, Paris. Jeez, that was so embarrassing and awful. No, okay, do not I'm here now. Fantastic. Where were we? <laughs> yeah, I would just say, I saw a lot of love for the work you're doing at the moment. Um, people are asking, is there anything that you're working on specifically? And also, is it just Instagram you're on so, um, with social media or can they, uh, where can they find you elsewhere? Um, yeah, so I did a movie earlier this year called One Up. Um, it's a Lionsgate BuzzFeed film and that'll come out, I believe, in theaters and I believe maybe in the springtime. Um, and then I just filmed a movie, um, with Netflix called Do Revenge. The title might change though. Um, and that will be on Netflix probably next year at some point too. So what type yeah. of movie, what type of genre is that one? Uh, that one is like, it's like a, it's like a dramedy. It's kind of like a Mean Girls Clueless vibe. Um, okay. and it has a really great cast in it. So. Both of the movies have really great casts, so yeah. Fantastic! I, I just watched, those things. I just saw the the one that you did with Adam Sandler. I thought that was really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I filmed that like two years ago now. Um, yeah, that one was really fun. Amber was in that, so <laughs> we both. <laughs> Does got it feel like two years, or is that two years flown by? So it came out last year, but we filmed right. it the year before. So cool. two years since filming, and one year since it came out. Fantastic. Well, Paris, again, thank you so much. I'm glad you're okay, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, do not be sorry. Um, <laughs> your health is more important. Um, thanks for your time. And yeah, just enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. You too. Have a good one. And you.